welcome back. So, in the last class we were discussing boundary value problems for general second order equations. So, <coughs> this is y double dot equal to f of t y y dot. So, this is the equation and uh, the boundary condition. So, this is in <coughs> uh, a less than t less than b and a 0 u a minus a 1 u dot a is equal to alpha b 0 u b plus b 1 u dot b equal to beta alpha beta are given <coughs> real numbers and so this is 2 a uh, the boundary conditions 1 b. So, the condition was this a 0 and a 1 do not vanish simultaneously and similarly uh, b 0 and b 1 do not vanish simultaneously. A formal approach to a solution of this boundary value problem 1 a and 1 b totally called one was through an initial value problem discuss this last time u dot equal to u double dot equal to f t u u dot call it 2 a and now we <coughs> impose conditions on u and u dot only at t equal to a. So, this the first one is sorry for the this thing. So, this is not u, this is y. y b y dot work okay. u a minus a 1 u dot a equal to alpha. So, there is no change in the first condition. And now, we want a <coughs> since it is second order equation want to impose one more initial condition and this we want it to be independent of the first one. So, this is minus c 1 u dot a equal to s. S is a parameter at our choice and again a real number and this is to b and by independence what I mean is this a 1 c 0 we have fixed c 0 and c 1 such that this is 1. Okay. <coughs> so, let uh, u be a solution of i v p uh, in the interval a b. So, last time we stated a theorem where some sufficient conditions uh, were imposed on the right hand side function f. So, that the solution of the initial value problem exists for all t in this interval and with this u we form this real valued function p of s. Remember the second <coughs> Uh, condition on u depends on s. So, we form this uh, b 0. Okay. So, u we emphasize the dependence on s. So, we say that u at t and emphasizing the dependence on s. So, this is u b s plus b 1 u dot 
B s minus beta. So, just <coughs> notice that this phi of s is nothing but the second boundary condition. Okay. So, if there exist, so this is the conclusion we drew last time. So, if there exist a star such that P of a star is 0, then y given by y of t is equal to u of t a star is a solution of the b v p. Okay. And this is called shooting method. So, <coughs> so in, in this approach we attack this <coughs> bond value problem through an initial layer problem and this is a big if. Okay. So, <coughs> so there is this in general uh, for every a star satisfying this phi a star equal to 0 that, that means, the roots of the function phi we get a solution of the boundary value problem. Okay. So, last time I stated <coughs> uh, a uniqueness result. So, let me just uh, again recall. So, theorem 1 So, let R be the region this T u uh, 1 u 2 T is in the interval a b and u 1 u 2 in R. Okay. This condition looks be stronger, but uh, that is sufficient for the uh, solution of the initial value problem to exist in the entire interval a b. Okay. So, suppose uh, f is uniformly lifted in u 1 u 2 variables in R. Okay. So, that last time I stated that let me just, just state one more time u 1 u 2 minus f of t v 1 v 2 is less than or equal to some m 1 u 1 minus v 1 plus m 2. Then B V P has as many solutions as the roots of phi. So, for every <coughs> root of this function, real valued function, so remember this phi is from R to R. So, <coughs> so now we go to the second theorem. Some uniqueness result. Okay. Theorem two. In addition to the hypothesis of theorem one, assume. So, now some smoothness condition on f remember f is this f of t u 1 u 2 okay, function of three variables t and u 1. So, this del f by del u 1 is positive and del f by del u 2 is bounded this is not norm just absolute value in R. 
that is the region in stated in theorem 1 and so, A 0 uh, B 0 uh, <coughs> A 0 A 1 have same sign and B 0 B 1 have same sign and A 0 and B 0 do not vanish simultaneously. Okay. So, we already assumed that A 0 and A 1 do not vanish simultaneously and B 0 B 1 do not vanish simultaneously those are standing hypothesis on the boundary conditions. And in any addition to that now we are assuming that A 0 and A 1 have the both uh, both have the same sign B 0 B 1 have the same sign and A 0 B 0 do not vanish simultaneously. Then the B V P has a unique solution. So, let me <coughs> say, sketch a proof of this, it is really simple and just uses one variable calculus, uh, but little technical in detail. So, sufficient to show sufficient to show that P has a unique root. Okay. So, if you just recall the conclusion of theorem 1, uh, the B V P will have as many solutions as the roots of phi. So, if we show that P has a unique root, then B V P will have unique root. So, again let me recall. So, recall this P of S is B 0 U B S plus B 1 U dot B S and U is the solution of the initial value problem. Okay. And uh, since phi is a real valued function defined on real line, so this is uh, this is accomplished. Okay. So, we show P has a unique root by showing that its derivative d p by d s is bounded away from d p by d s is bounded away okay, from 0 that is d p by d s is bigger than equal to c positive or d p by d s less than or equal to minus c strictly less than 0 for all s. So, either it stays <coughs> all the time all for all s it stays positive or it stays negative. Okay. So, just as an example okay, if you take E s its derivative is e to the s the, okay, the derivative uh, e to the s is bigger than or equal to 0 for all s in r, but it is not bounded away from 0. Okay. So, infimum e to the s, s in r is 0. Okay. So, e to the s is not an example. So, once this is satisfied, so you can show that, so this is a simple calculus lemma. So, suppose P from R to R be such that d P by d s is bounded away from 0.
So, then there exist unique S star such that such that P of S star is 0. Okay. So, it is a very simple thing. So, you just uh, it is not hard to see that. Okay, now, coming back to the so proof. So, you have to establish that d phi by d s is bounded away from 0. Okay. So, for this we introduce something. Okay. So, introduce j okay. t is d u by d s t s. Okay. So, I am taking partial differential equation uh, derivative with respect to S. Remember, S appears in the initial condition. Okay. So, now I am varying that S. So, I am considering u as a function of S uh, initial condition. Okay. It appears in the initial condition. Okay. And now, look at the equation again for the u. So, look at recall that. So, u double dot equal to f of t u u dot. Okay. So, u now implicitly depends on this s. So, we will differentiate this equation with respect to s. So, differentiate with respect to s. Okay. So, this is <coughs> this is what we learn in general theory the continuous dependence on the of the solution of the initial value problem with respect to initial data. <coughs> uh, okay. So, if you do that thing then we get j double dot equal to. So, let me just write it uh, p t j dot plus q t j. Okay. So, remember this is j the derivative of the solution of the initial value problem with respect to s. So, what is p? So, where p t just coming from this you are differentiating the right hand side with respect to s and so you are using just the uh, implicit differentiation. So, this is what you get. So, d f by d u dot. So, now everything you let me write once then it is understood. Okay. And u t is just t does not depend on s. So, you do not have to worry about that and same thing. Okay. So, this is called variation equation. Okay. So, this plays an important role now variation equation and remember why this j is important if you go look at the expression for phi, phi okay, we are analyzing this phi, phi is nothing but u b s b 0 plus b 1 u dot b s and we are trying to show the derivative of phi is bounded away from 0. So, what is the derivative of phi? Phi is nothing but this derivative of u with respect to s and that is precisely j. Okay. So, that is why this role of j is important. Okay. So, now you see that from hypothesis <coughs> this q is positive okay. Let me see. by hypothesis q is positive and p is bounded. Okay. So, we are going to make use of this. Okay. 
<coughs> so, let me again uh, rewrite here. So, j double dot equal to p t j dot. So, you keep on recalling this. So, this let me call it uh, 3 a and similarly, if you now <coughs> differentiate the initial conditions to a, what you get is j of a is equal to you do that thing. So, let let me just write what you get is by differentiating uh, initial conditions. to A with respect to S. Okay. So, everything with respect to S, we obtain A 0 j A minus A 1 j dot A, this is 0 because this is alpha there. So, alpha does not depend on S. So, that is we get that one. So, C 0 j a minus c 1 j dot a and there is an s here. So, when I differentiate with respect to s, we will get 1 okay. and by our choice of c 0, you immediately see that j a if you solve these two equations, you get a 1 and j dot uh, a is equal to a 0. So, let me call this as 3 b. Okay, now, just concentrate on this condition and remember a 0, a 1 they have the same sign and uh, they do not vanish uh, simultaneously. So, let us fix. Okay. So, assume so the other case is similar assume a 0 is non negative and a 1 is non negative okay. and look at the conditions 3 b. Okay. So, if a 1 is positive, if a 1 is positive then j a is positive and this implies j t is positive in a small neighborhood uh, in this interval. a to a epsilon. Okay. So, there is no problem there and if a 1 is 0, then a 0 is positive by our choice and look at the second condition j dot a equal to a 0, a 0 is positive. So, j is again increasing. So, again that implies so, j t is in some a to a epsilon. Okay. This epsilon may be different. What we are trying to say here is j remains positive with our this assumption important. Okay. If we assume the both are negative, then we will have negative thing here, but just for definiteness, let us fix the signs of a 0 and a 1. Okay. So, that is that is what we get. Okay. So, therefore, j t is positive for t in a a epsilon for some epsilon positive. Okay. So, claim so this is again very simple calculus argument j t is positive for all t in a b. So, up to b the chi j remains positive. So, only at a it may be 0 or it may be positive. Okay. So, that is the claim. Okay. So, once we have this thing it is uh, the proof follows very easily and this is also very simple argument. 
So, suppose not a calculus argument suppose not. So, what does that mean? So, there exists some T star uh, in A B such that j t star is less than or equal to 0. So, may be better draw some diagram. So, so, there is a here, there is t star there and there is b here. Okay. So, we already know that j is positive in some small neighborhood that is important okay, it is positive there. Okay. So, it may be 0 here okay, and then it comes. So, looking at the <coughs> uh, picture, so therefore, j has a positive maximum, it could be just relative maximum, no problem in a t star. Okay. And we want to rule out this a. T star is already ruled out because j T star is less than or equal to 0. So, it cannot be a positive maximum. So, we want to rule out this positive maximum at A. So, how to do that thing? So, if A 0 is positive, then j dot A is A 0 positive. So, uh, positive maximum cannot occur cannot occur at A. Okay. And if A 0 is 0, then look at <coughs> j uh, j double dot a from the equation. So, this is go back to the equation. So, j double dot a is equal to p t uh, j dot a plus q t uh, j a and now we are assuming a 0 is 0. So, that means, this is 0 okay, and this is q t j a and j a is a 1. So, this is strictly positive. So, and at a maximum the second derivative cannot be positive, it can only be less than or equal to 0. So, therefore, uh, again the positive maximum cannot occur at A. Okay. So, that means, what the positive maximum occurs at an interior point T 0. Let us go back. Okay. So, therefore, a, a positive maximum occurs at t call it t 0 or t 1 or okay, t 1 in a t star. So, an at an interior point. So, this is an interior point, it is not either a or t star. So, then we know that when a maximum occurs at an interior point. So, therefore, we have this j of t 1 strictly positive, j dot t 1 is 0 because it is the maximum and one more condition this j double dot t 1 is less than I equal to 0. Okay. This is from calculus, okay. but again you go back to the equation variation equation. So, j dot t 1 
is equal to p t j dot p t 1 j dot t 1 plus q t 1 j t 1 and again this is 0 and this is positive. So, whole thing is positive, but at a maximum j dot j double dot t 1 is negative. So, this is a contradiction. So, this is a Okay. So, therefore, our claim is true. So, therefore, what is our claim? J t is positive for all t in a b up to b. Okay. So, that is important. Okay. So, this is the first step and the, the remaining steps are very straightforward. So, now look at again go back to the look at <coughs> the variation equation j double dot equal to p t j dot plus q t j. Okay. So, everything at t. Okay. So, let me just try that. And just now we have proved that this j t is positive up to b and q is positive by assumption. So, this one is positive for all t in a. Okay. So, therefore, we have this inequality, we can put greater than or just And fortunately, we can integrate an inequality, we cannot differentiate an inequality, but we can certainly integrate an inequality. So, integrate this and preserving the <coughs> sign of inequality, integrate this. You will not do directly, so we have to multiply. <coughs> by exponential 0 to t, let me write p s, you multiply by this and then this is the integrating factor. So, multiply and integrate. Okay. So, what you obtain is, <coughs> so j dot t is bigger than a 0, this is coming from the uh, condition j dot a equal to not 0 here a, so, our point is a. Okay. So, this is <coughs> exponential a to t uh, p s t s not p s. So, let, let me use some other variable may be eta. So, this is true for all t in a b up to b, no problem. Okay. And now, this integrate one more time. So, integrate one more time. Okay, to obtain so, finally, we have j t is bigger than a 1 plus a 0. So, there is a double integral. So, let me write it uh, first and then. So, a to t uh, let me write d eta and then exponential as it is a to eta p eta 1 d eta 1. So, there is a double integral here okay. that is one. Okay. Now, you use the hypothesis. 
So, U hypothesis that mod p is less than or equal to m. So, we are just using one sided. So, p is bigger than or equal to minus m. Okay. m is some positive constant okay. and then if you uh, plug in this hypothesis on p. So, we obtain j dot t is bigger than uh, a 0 e to the minus m t minus a and j t bigger than a 1 plus a 0. Uh, there is so you have to do some integration there. Let me just write it e to the m t minus a divided by m. In the second inequality, there are the double integral. So if you do that double integral, you get this thing, and this is valid for all t in a b. Okay. So, remember again, so you have to just <laughs> remember that thing. So, recall phi s is uh, b 0 u b s uh, plus b 1 u dot b s. Okay. So, therefore, d phi by d s okay, is just b 0 d u by d s at b s plus b 1 d u dot by d s at b s and by our notation this is nothing but j of b s plus b 1 j dot at b s. Okay. And our aim is to show that d phi by d s is bounded away from 0 okay, that you remember that. Okay. So, now we have got the expressions for j and j dot for all t. So, in particular for t equal to b and let us see whether they are bounded away from 0. Okay. So, that is our uh, uh, next task. Okay, just okay. So if <coughs> a zero uh, <coughs> so look again let me go back there. Just look at this. Look at here. Okay, so, both j dot b is greater than or equal to 0 and j b since there is a 1 there and, okay, so and a 0 and a 1 are not simultaneously 0, j b is always bounded away from 0. There is no problem about j b. Okay. This is always bounded away from 0 and this in general not. Okay that is just I want to. So, note that j b is you no know, let me write y b let me write t is bounded away from 0 for all t in a b. Of course, we are just interested in the final point p. The same is true for j dot t if a 0 is strictly positive. Okay. So, the trouble occurs when a 0 is 0 and now again look at the conditions. Okay. 
So, if A 0 is 0, then B 0 is not 0. So, this is one of the hypothesis. Okay. In the second theorem, we want this A 0, uh, B 0 should not vanish simultaneously. Okay. And also, B 0 also B 0 B 1 have the same sign. Okay. If A 0 is 0, B 0 is not 0 and B 0 and B 1 have the same sign and again now look at phi s recall this B 0 u b s okay, plus b 1 u dot b s. Okay. So, our only concern now is what happens if a 0 is 0. So, if a 0 is 0 then b 0 is not 0 and b 0 and b 1 they have same sign. So, if B 1 is 0 that is no problem, if B 1 is not 0, B 1 and B 0 have same sign okay? and we are already seen that this derivative of u with respect to s is bounded away from 0 okay? and this is just uh, infimum could be 0, but in this case we have B 0 not 0. So, therefore, again d phi by d s d phi by d s is bounded away from 0 even when a 0 is 0. So, let me again recall this. Okay. So, if a 0 is 0 by our hypothesis b 0 is not 0 and B 0 and B 1 have the same sign okay? and that is important because the, the B 0 and B 1 they okay, let me there is a beta here okay, that does not matter. Okay, so, B, <coughs> there is a beta there. B 0 and, B, and when I take derivative with respect to S that beta anyhow uh, goes away. So, important that B 0 and B 1 have the same sign and B 0 is not 0. So, when I take the derivative, it again bound, I already know that, I already know that j, uh, j is bounded away from 0, I already know that. I already know that, the only <coughs> problem with respect to j dot, uh, j dot and that is now taken care of uh, by this additional hypothesis. So, the remember this is additional hypothesis. Okay. So, when A 0 is 0, we require that B 0 is different from 0 and we also require that B 0, B 1 have the same sign and that assures that d phi by d s is again bounded away from 0 even when A 0 is 0. So, therefore, d phi by d s bounded away from 0 in all the cases and this completes the proof. Okay. So, this very simple calculus one dimensional calculus uh, tools uh, very nice uh, proof. Okay. Of course, one can always question this whether they are necessary or they can be weakened okay. and uh, that is uh, you can always look into the literature and see if a weaker hypothesis are possible. Okay. So, again let me recall 
Okay, this is the one uh, uh, so again last time I stated this example hope you have worked out. So, again let me recall that uh, so this uh, y double dot plus lambda e y equal to 0. So, y 0 equal to 0 y 1 equal to 0. Okay. So, this lambda is positive. Okay. So, I approach this bound value problem via this initial value. So, this is B V P. So, this is I V P. So, u dot u double dot plus lambda e u equal to 0. So, you put one this initial condition same thing and now this is an independent uh, initial condition I put a parameter s. Okay. So, last time I mentioned that this can be solved explicitly a solution of I V P can be found in explicit form. Okay. So, do it. So, it is similar to the one we did in case of conservative equations. So, this is also in conservative equation uh, explicit form. Okay. So, using that explicit form obviously, it contains this parameter S. Yes. Okay. So, next question is is there an S star. So, you call this solution as U T S. Okay, is there an S star such that u at 1 S star is 0, because that is the condition we want at t equal to 1. Okay, so, that is the question. So, if yes, if yes then y of t is equal to u of t S star uh, is a solution of B V P. Okay. So, do this thing and also uh, <coughs> do this and also discuss uniqueness. So, why I am <coughs> uh, stating this example is that this e to the u in this e to the u is not globally Lipschitz, is not globally Lipschitz, it is locally Lipschitz. Okay. Okay. So, this condition is not really necessary, what we want is this uh, solution to the initial value problem to exist uh, for the interval in question. In this uh, situation, we have just 0 1. Okay. So, we are satisfied if a solution of the initial value problem exists for all t in this interval. Okay. We are not bothered whether it blows up outside that thing. Okay. So, there are I mean the possibilities of weaker hypothesis. Okay. So, with that thing I come to an end of this di simple discussion on bond value problems. So, we first discuss the linear uh, bond value problems in which we have the advantage of uh, fundamental solutions from the linear system 
but in the case of non-linear system our approach was through this IVP okay, and uh, you can now uh, refer literature and even see more general problems involving these boundary values. With that brief discussion on the boundary value problems for second order equations, we come to the end of this course on ordinate differential equations. We hope that you the listeners have enjoyed the course. <coughs> the topics of the course were mainly based on the syllabus of ODE courses in most of our universities and other institutions. Uh, as you might have noticed, we have omitted some important topics such as regular and singular sturm liouville theory and corresponding eigenvalue problem or spectral problems. And also uh, systems with periodic coefficients and the corresponding Floquet theory. At the same time, we have added as a trade off some discussion on qualitative theory of autonomous systems and shooting method for the boundary value problem uh, of a general second order equations. The <coughs> qualitative theory for autonomous systems is an important topic uh, not only in physical and engineering sciences, but also in mathematical biology especially mathematical epidemiology where many problems have been modeled uh, as first order uh, autonomous uh, ODEs. The subject field of ODE is quite vast and it is not at all possible to include all the topics in a single course to satisfy the various users of the subject. We however, hope that those who have followed the course meticulously will be able to read and understand the cited references further topics of their interest. Uh, with our energy levels permitting and time permitting, we certainly hope to return with another course on ODE in future comprising of sturm liouville theory, Floquet theory and some advanced topics in qualitative theory and perhaps some topics in non-autonomous systems also. We would like to certainly hear from you regarding the contents and usefulness of this course. Your constructive criticisms are always welcome. Thank you.